Hello, everyone. And oh, oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm just a bit tired at the moment. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Advent assembly. Um, I just, I can't believe how close Christmas is. Every year, you think I'll be a bit more organised, but every year. I get to this point of year, I get really tired and I've still got so much to do. As I record this, it's the end of November and the beginning of Advent, which is the 1st of December, is just around the corner. And I am struggling to get all my Christmas and Advent preparation done. Well, that's a bit of an odd thing to say, really, because Advent is preparation for Christmas. It's preparing our hearts and our homes, our minds and our songs ready for the Christmas celebration on December 25th. Now, I'm sure you know all about the Christmas celebration on December the 25th, the big feast, the presents, the time with family. But actually, you might not know a lot about Advent. And so the point of my assembly today is to try and help you learn about Advent. In my church, we Advent starts on the 1st of December and we have we begin to change the songs that we sing. We begin to sing more Christmassy songs, but we also choose a special song that helps us get ready for Christmas. No, not that one. That one's all about Christmas. What we choose is an Advent song, a song that helps us get ready for Christmas Day and the coming of Jesus. This is uh, this is the one that I think we're going to use this year. I hope you enjoy it. There's nothing like a nice bit of samba music, is there? This child, da, 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 da. oh, sorry, now let's move on. So yes, I've chosen a song. So now I've got to choose and choose the things that I'm going to do that's special during Advent. Now most of you will probably have one of these, an Advent calendar. Um, this is the Advent calendar that I've bought for some of the children in my church, and I've also bought for my son who lives still lives with me now my son is 20 years old he really doesn't need an advent calendar but his mum insisted but there are other things that people do during advent some people light advent candles and as you can see there's numbers all the way down the candle and the idea is you set fire to the top of the candle and you allow all the wax from day one to melt away and whilst it's melting away you spend time thinking and praying and preparing your heart and mind for Christmas. Now, I don't like candles that much. I have a tendency to knock them over and set fire to things. 
But what I do like is thinking and stopping and praying. And so I'm going to read an Advent book, a special book that I've chosen just to read during this season. And I say to all my congregation that it'd be really good if they read a book, no matter how old or how young they are, to help them prepare for Christmas Day. But not everybody um, celebrates Advent in that way. Some of my Catholic friends have special saints days during Advent. Now, you probably don't recognise this, but this is St Nicholas. He is, uh, his saints day is the 6th of December. And um, St. Nicholas is a very important person because he's one of the people who began to shape Christmas for what it is. St. Nicholas is the man who put um, coins down a chimney to help deliver an anonymous gift so that girls could get married. And they fell down the chimney and into their stockings. And that's why we hang stockings on our chimneys on Christmas Eve. That's why your mum and dad might buy you gold or silver coins to put in your stockings on Christmas Eve. Now, St. Nicholas becomes St. Nick. Now, this is a picture from Denmark. And you might think St. Nicholas has changed an awful lot from him to him. And you're right, he has. And he changes even more. By the time the people of uh, Denmark moved to America, his name was Santa Claus, and he becomes Santa Claus. Bet you didn't know that. One of my other favourite saints is Saint Lucia. Now, her saint day is uh, the 13th of December. And the people of Sweden take St. Lucia very seriously because uh, St. Lucia is one of those people who helps them celebrate the shortest night of the year. Sorry, the longest night of the year, the shortest day of the year, turning around and becoming um, uh, the moving towards becoming the longest day and the longest night. Winter begins to be over and, and the movement towards spring has begun. And uh, you see that thing she wears on her head. Now, the reason I like St. Lucia is a friend of mine who used to worship with me many years ago told me about how in her, her church she walks around just like St. Lucia with a St. Lucia crown on. And it's not just her, but all the girls in her village. And she offered to do it for us in church. I went, no, 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 no. Too many things you could trip over. Too many things that could catch fire. But for her in Sweden, this is one of the highest days of the holiday. Not just Christmas Day, but in, on, uh, December, on December 13th, in preparation for Christmas Day, they start their gift giving and they start their celebrating. Now, St. Lucia also reminds me of another thing I've got to do. I've got to remember candles. Normally, in my church, we don't use candles. We all, yeah, we don't use candles that much. We only use them on really special occasions, such as high days and holidays, uh, Easter, Christmas, perhaps even Pentecost. Um, but we have an Advent crown. Yeah, Advent crown, Advent ring, depends which kind of church you go to. And um, in that candle, in that Advent ring, there are five candles, one for each of the Sundays of Advent, um, and one for Christmas Day. Now, in our church, I can never remember. Is it four red candles and one white candle or one red candle and four white candles? I'm going to have to go and do some shopping in a minute, I think. Well, I can't remember, but we have five candles. But some of my friends from other churches have different colours candles. Perhaps if you go along to a Catholic church with your carers or your parents or even your grandparents, you might see purple or pink candles and they're all there to help us count down and get ourselves ready for Christmas. Christmas is just, I'm looking forward to Christmas this year. Last year we couldn't have any services and this year we're planning to have two services. One in the church car park where we can sing carols out loud to the whole community um, and one inside the church where we're going to do carols by candlelight and do the Chris Dingle. Christine, go 
begins with an orange Telling us of a world God made By the fruits of the earth in the seasons We can see the love of God displayed Sing, Christine, go sing, Christine, go sing Christine, go sing, 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 Christine, go sing,
Ah, oh, so much to do. Hymns to choose. Carols, carols, carols. So many carols to choose. Ah, oh, so much shopping to do. The nice thing about Advent, and sometimes it can be a root pain in the neck because we're all so busy getting ready for Christmas, is that it helps remind us what Christmas is about. It's lovely to spend time with families. It's lovely to feast. It's lovely to see the end of midwinter. It's lovely to be look, looking forward to the end of year and the start of a new year. But Christ Mass Day, that day of celebrating the coming of the Christ child, is what Advent reminds us and points us towards. I hope you enjoy Advent. I hope you enjoy your Advent candles. Oh, sorry, your Advent calendars and your Advent candles. I hope to speak to you before Christmas. But I hope more than anything you've enjoyed watching the video today and you've learned something new all about Advent. Have a wonderful time as you get ready for Christmas. Bye, everyone. Bye. Waiting. The action of staying where one is. Time passing. Expecting something to happen until one day it does. Advent is a time of waiting, of hope, of anticipation. God tells us in Galatians that when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son. Advent is the church in waiting, the church's yearly reminder each December of what Christians worldwide anticipate in the days before Christmas. We wait for Christmas as Israel waited centuries for a savior, for God to fulfill his covenant. They waited for a virgin son to Abraham's line, a descendant of Isaac, Jacob, and David, for a branch from the rod of Jesse, for a baby born in Bethlehem called Emmanuel. For generations, God's people waited for the fulfillment of countless Old Testament prophecies of a savior who would light this world brighter than any Magi star. Jesus was the long-awaited hope to a dark and sinful world. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. As Christians wait for the light of Christmas, the four Advent candles are lit with each week's passing, and blue decorates the altar to receive our King with hope. But we know that our hoping and waiting doesn't stop at Christmas because he's coming back on the last day, a second advent. So as we hope for Christmas, we continue to wait and pray for our Savior to come again. seem to get suspiciously busy. 
it's because they're getting ready for Christmas. And that's what the church is doing too. Sometimes the colors of the decorations in the church change to violet or to blue. Each Sunday in Advent, we light a candle on a special wreath to remember God's hope, peace, joy, and love. But most importantly, we remember how the Savior of the whole world came to earth as a baby. And all of this because God loves us so much that he gave his only son. So Advent is the season when we take time amidst all the other things that are happening before Christmas to remember all of that. 